Hey guys, Warren here from Toy Fishing. We're checking out this German special, the Pilsner of all knots, the pits and knot. Let's find out how to tie this German knot. Will it hold up? Will it have that revere? <laughs> Who knows? Reverse concept, that's interesting. Clinch knot in reverse. Not sure how the tag end's gonna do on the other end of the knot. I'm sure we'll find out. Not in this episode though, in the world's strongest knot, episode seven, the pits are not looking forward to that. S looking forward to how it actually holds up. And uh, we'll be doing the overview on this one as well. Uh, that'll be coming up shortly. Yeah, let's check it out, the pits are not. Can't wait. Another great evolution of the clinch knot and is a great knot that provides an interesting technique for securing the tag end. So there's typically a few knot references or descriptions or parts to a knot that I'll refer to when tying a knot. That's the tag end. This is the end of the line that you actually use to create the knot, the standing end. This is the remainder of the line that runs up to the rest of the main line and a cinch also referred to the tightening of the knot basically when the knot binds down to its completed state right let's find out how smooth a pilsner from germany really is pass the tag in through the eye of the hook or the item you are tying then pull through about 12 inches then compress and hold the hook in your lower left hand with your pinky and ring finger like this. Then with your right hand, grab the tag end with your thumb and index finger and grab the standing end with your pinky and ring finger and hold down firmly. Then with your right hand again, using your index finger and thumb, grab the standing end line also. At this point, use your left hand and push the tag end behind both lines. That's actually the hardest part of the knot, getting it in position where you have three fingers in your left hand free to work and the right hand holding the line in two places. Then begin to wrap the line in an anti-clockwise direction around the two lines in the center five times for now. One, two, three, four, and five. Then take the tag in and pass it through the loop, which is being held by your right hand near the top of the knot. Then tighten the knot by pulling the tag in so it's small enough to fit in your mouth. Right, then wet the knot and the line running to the hook with saliva. Then pull the standing in slowly and allow the knot to slip to the hook eyelet. Then you can cinch this down hard, alternating between the standing end and the tag end. Ensure the line running down the side of the knot is neat and tidy. Ensure the knot looks like a pitson knot. Then take a scissors and cut off the tag end. You need to leave about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters to the tag length. So that's it, the pitson knot. This is an interesting derivative of the clinch knot, which adds an additional area at the top of the knot to secure the tag end. It's not important whether you choose a clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction to the wraps. Finger placement is key with this knot. The best advice I can give you when doing knots similar to this is to get used to gripping the item you're tying with your left hand by using your ring finger and pinky against the palm of your hand and gripping the standing in line in your right hand using your ring finger and pinky. 
and palm of your hand. This will allow you to free up three fingers of each of your hands for tying, just like this. This technique will improve and you'll get to a point where you don't actually think about it anymore and it becomes natural. This is another knot that falls into a category of knots called slip knots, where you're able to move the knot up and down the standing end freely. It also gives it extra ability to continually tighten during the use of the knot on the business end of your line. You'll need to adjust the amount of wraps according to the line type and the line thickness. This could vary from about three wraps on thicker monofilament to about nine wraps on braided lines. There are actually a few knots with similar base design of the clinch knot, but have tucks in various different positions to allow each angler to be able to select a knot that best suits their fishing style and method. So there are great benefits and strengths to this knot that I'd like to go into in more depth. I will have a look at this in our overview video, which will be coming up real soon. I'm Warren, this is Toy Fishing. Please like, please subscribe, and please get on our website. We will be checking out the Pizza Knot overview shortly. The video is coming up and also we're going to be testing it. We're going to be putting it up on the leaderboard, getting it on this machine, seeing how good it really is. Does this kind of reverse clinch knot technique or idea actually work? Does it hold up? We'll find out. Okay. <laughs>